Hey, it's Brian G. Johnson, and I've got an update for you today on some marketing that I've been doing, kind of just testing a bunch of stuff out, really having a, an awesome time playing uh, with marketing. I feel so fortunate to be able to be an internet marketer and test this stuff out. And what I'm going to share with you today is basically an update on Revenge of the Affiliate, which was kind of a concept um, of what I would move forward with in 2012. So as mentioned, this will be, well, the update. Here's what we're going to talk about before we uh, get into it. Um, if you haven't heard of like uh, Revenge of the Affiliate, I want to give you kind of a quick synopsis about what the plan of action is, what it really means, and so on. It all kind of started around uh, January or so of this year, 2012. And at the time, uh, one of my friends and uh, marketers James Jones was doing a lot of stuff with uh, Kindle publishing. He was really excited about the Kindle. Uh, his sales were doing pretty darn well um, with the recent holiday. And in fact, book sales, or actually that's not true. Not book sales, but the sale of devices, particularly tablet devices from December to January nearly doubled from about 14% of uh, U.S. adults that would own a... Okay, let me st start over and say that part again. I don't feel like redoing this whole video. Uh, anyway, the percentage of U.S. adults in December of 2011 that owned a tablet device was about 14%. And by January of 2012, that number increased to 29%. So it nearly doubled. And what that means for you and me, marketers that are on the Internet, is pretty much one in three adults own a tablet device in the United States, and, then, and thus they're capable of getting a book from a Kindle, the Amazon Marketplace, straight to their device. That was really exciting. So I heard this, and you know, James had been going on about uh, the Kindle and whatnot. And I started thinking, you know, I've been hearing about this Amazon stuff for a while now, self-publishing. I really need to jump in and, and take a look at it. Now, about the same time, I also uh, went to a conference that was really a tremendous conference. It was the uh, Traffic and Conversions Conference, Ryan Dice. It took place in Austin, Texas, again in January. And at the event, they talked a lot about using channels uh, like Facebook, Amazon, uh, YouTube, and whatnot to be able to generate traffic. And as you know, the lifeblood of any internet marketing business is your ability to send traffic. So with that, I really decided that I wanted to try some new concepts in 2012. And these are some of the things that were in my head in December. Uh, one of the things was I was really big on creating a, a big brand, creating brands, going big, no more niche marketing, uh, focus, concentrated effort on one website, that, and leverage social media like Facebook and whatnot. And it was really a departure uh, from the old way, right? The old way with SEO from when I started, you know, I started back in the day. We're talking literally, I was reading books about uh, internet marketing in 1999. I went full time by 2003, and the old way was basically you got a site, and you paid attention to the keywords, and you put the keywords in the right places like your title and description. You built a, a hierarchy kind of like this, and that was it. And it worked pretty darn well. You know, you paid attention to the keywords, uh, you launched a website, you start building some links after time, and it worked really, really well for many, many years. And it still works incredibly well today, and uh, SEO is a huge part of my internet marketing. But what I want you to think about is this is kind of like SEO 3.0, and this is really how I am moving forward with Revenge of the Affiliate. And the whole concept behind Revenge of the Affiliate was to accomplish several things. Number one was to drive traffic from big properties like Facebook, Amazon that we've been talking about and I kept hearing about, uh, YouTube. Now, I've been doing and I do video marketing for a long time. And what's really interesting is that 
Google has the potential to stop internet marketers dead on their tracks on Google. However, they can't really do a whole mess of uh, stopping with stuff on Facebook. In other words, if you have uh, an account on Facebook and you have a thousand friends and you show them a picture and link to your website, there's a good chance you're going to send traffic to your site and Google can't stop that. And when it comes to like the most stable traffic source that I've personally used, you know, nothing has been more stable than YouTube. I got started with YouTube back in the day, again, 2007, and I've had well over 200,000 video views to one of my channels that's internet marketing. I've got a cooking channel that's got well over, uh, it's probably 900,000 by now, well over 800,000 views, and that's people watching the video the entire way through. And you can direct people to your website. You can provide a link on YouTube to your website. And this was the foundational thinking of Revenge of the Affiliate. Uh, one of the things that Google doesn't like, we're going to talk about it in a bit, is affiliate marketers. And, uh, you know, if, if I can get traffic from Facebook, well, I can make money. If I can get traffic from YouTube, again, I can make money. And the last part of the puzzle was self-publishing. And that was really interesting because I could publish a book on Amazon and I could do some SEO on Amazon and get ranked for keywords on Amazon, which is very effective. I'm doing it and it's incredibly exciting. And it's just one way to push more traffic to a website, uh, build a list, and, okay, this is like a double plus, you can also make money by the sale of the book. So you can make money up front, you can push visitors, you can get leads, you can do all this stuff. And there's other sources as well, right? I mean, you could easily uh, do stuff with uh, Google Plus or LinkedIn. Uh, you could leverage Pinterest in a lot of other ways to drive traffic. But the idea now is that you build a website and you're going to do SEO, but don't even worry about link building. Build up a social presence. Leverage big channels online like, again, YouTube, uh, Amazon, Facebook, and drive traffic into the hub, which is your website. Build a list. Uh, make money with affiliate offers, etc. So that was the plan, and that's where I'm at right now. Um, I actually had a, a webinar in January, and I went into detail about why I was going to do this. I spent a lot more time explaining every intricacy and whatnot, and I told people, so, you know, this is what I'm doing, and if you want to attend a webinar where I lay out the strategy that I've devised, show up, pay $10, and that'll be that. So I had this webinar. It was pretty exciting. People loved it. They said, thank you. It was all good. And now here we are. It's, uh, what is it like today, the 6th or something like that? 6th of June, I think, maybe the 7th. I work from home. I don't need to keep track. So we're nearly halfway through the year, and this is the update of where I'm at. Is it working? What am I seeing? What is kind of uh, pissing me off? What's not working? And so on. So this is really what I'm most excited about, and I want to share that with you in this video. Let's check out the next slide. So before we do that, one of the big cornerstones of this concept, again, was to have a life free okay, of affiliate links. And here's the reason why. Uh, Google is a robot. Google is an algorithm. Google has to make decisions based on how they program their algorithm, and they have to make uh, decisions just based on what they see uh, from a robot perspective. And if they see an affiliate link on a site, there's a really good chance they're going to discount the site. They're not going to think it's a, as credible as it could be. And if you're just getting started with trying to make money online and nobody's visiting your site, so you don't have any of that like kind of social proof, you don't have visitors, you don't have people leaving comments, and Google sees affiliate links, you start to really kind of pigeonhole yourself and put yourself in a position that it's really hard to rank. And if you can't rank, you can't make any money. So one of the uh, ideas that I really loved about uh, Revenge of the Affiliate is that you don't have to use affiliate links at all on your website to make money. Now this uh, screenshot actually comes from the Google Webmaster Guidelines. You can see that search term right here. Google Webmaster Guidelines. And they kind of say if your site participates in an affiliate program, make sure your site adds value. 
Please provide unique and relevant content that gives users a reason to visit your site. Um, there's some other additional uh, wordage about affiliate links, and the bottom line is Google isn't too hip on them, so it's something to really think about. And this concept uh, alleviates, alleviates the need for that because you're publishing books to Amazon, you're not an affiliate, you're an author, and you get royalty payments for your book. Totally different thing. Do you see where this is going? It's pretty exciting. It's like, not only that, but you're a published author. You get that credibility. You get to lend that credibility to your site. You get to gain authority and so on. So the first step is I want to talk a little bit about how to set this up for yourself. And obviously I can't go into every facet and this is there's a lot of information. And at this point it's working out pretty darn good. I'm really excited. And maybe this will be a course I teach in six months or four months or, or I don't know. Maybe I won't be uh, happy with the results, but so far so good. One of the things, however, that I can share with you and I want to share with you is a little bit about Facebook and a little bit about the, the niche you choose, the subject matter that you choose. It's absolutely critical that you get this right. And what we want to do is we want to target people that are interested in certain types of hobbies. Uh, we want to target niche markets that people return to time and time again. So that would be something like um, uh, video games. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do something in that space. I'm kind of excited about it. And I just bought a new domain, and I'm, I'm basically setting up my, about my third campaign with Revenge of the Affiliate. And I think this one has huge potential, so I'll keep you abreast of that. Another example of a passion might be people that love to fish, right? Or people that love to travel. You want to think about how people spend their time when they have time off from work and whatnot. And targeting a passion is awesome. People spend a lot of money on their passions. Now, you also might want to think about uh, hobbies, you know, things like remote control cars or, uh, again, fishing or sports or hunting and so on. And target their interests. That's what that says. It's really a mess, but you get the idea. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how I get started with a niche that I that I launch and and again it all starts off with the right niche and it starts off with a hobby or something that people are passionate about and I was speaking to a, a friend Alex Goat and he mentioned something about Facebook that another one of my buddies and partners mentioned to Alex and I'll credit both of them uh, Jared Croslow mentioned that when you're doing Facebook Think about the niche market you're going to enter into with a fan page should be something that someone would be willing to wear on a t-shirt, okay? So years ago, I would set up little sniper sites and target stuff like best men's electric razor. That's not what you want to do. No one's going to have an electric razor on their shirt. But would someone be willing to wear a shirt about a place they love to visit, like maybe the ocean or Hawaii or would they wear uh, a t-shirt about uh, remote control toys? Or would they wear a t-shirt about certain kind of things? And if they, if they would, that's the kind of thing you want to target. And we're going to talk in this little video about ads. You see, one of the things that's really exciting is that right now, you have an opportunity to develop a community around a particular hobby or niche or... Uh, event, um, an interest that people just flock to and love and oftentimes they spend a bunch of money and you can kind of get uh, pay-per-click advertising at 2003 prices. Right now I'm spending about 10 cents to maybe about 13 cents a click. Now that sounds expensive and it is expensive but you would be amazed at what you can do for about $10 a day or $5 a day. And I have grown a fan page to a thousand fans for about a hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, maybe it was 103 or 87 or 97, but basically figure you can uh, launch an ad in certain kind of uh demographics on Facebook. Not all of them, but you can find some niches where the clicks are pretty cheap and you can get ads for as low as 10 cents. And I know people that are getting clicks as low as, as a nickel, you know, five cents per click. And that's really exciting. 
And you can get a, a base of a thousand people turn the ads off and you can move forward and you can grow virally and that's what I want to share with you. So in other words, you can, you can spend a hundred dollars on creating a fan page that has about a thousand fans and you have the opportunity to remarket and that's very exciting, okay? And we're going to give you a bonus in this video, and it's coming up right now. You have a chance to remarket to these 1,000 people time and time again. Because every time you add a little post, it's called a status update on Facebook, those fans, okay, those 1,000 people are going to see your ad. So if they like your uh, page on Hawaii, and you've got a travel book on Hawaii, you can send out the little notification about your book, people might buy it, and then three days later you can tell them about a beautiful poster. And then another three days later you can show them an amazing graphic to grow virally. Now that's the other bonus. Is that what happens is that oftentimes you can start off with a fan base and pay a little money to ramp things up quickly. A hundred bucks gets you a hundred or a thousand fans and then that will grow exponentially because of the viral nature of Facebook. And that bonus that I mentioned, re remarketing is kind of like having a list. You know, so many times people have asked me, Brian, how can I start a list for free? Give me an alternative to AWeber. Well, here it is. You know, sign up with Facebook, and every time someone likes your page, you have a chance to send out an update, and they will see that time and time again. It's like building a list and you have a community. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the viral aspect of Facebook and why it's so powerful. And I'm going to tell you how I'm marketing my book right now on Facebook and how I'm already making sales. Okay, this is a, a, a little advertisement, not an advertisement, what am I saying? This is a little screenshot from my Facebook page and you can see here I've had at this point, I've had about a thousand people see my little post here. And this is actually a post that advertises my book at Amazon. Can you believe it? Right over here on the, on the left is, is kind of a picture of my book. There's like the image of the book, and then it's got a little description here. And what's really interesting is that I'm in a niche that people are passionate about. They're like uh, evangelists. And they like my stuff, and they share my stuff. And you can see at this point, out of those uh, 1,078 people, about 20%, 25%, 20, over 25%, more like 30% of the people that have seen this post, it's based on viral activity. I didn't pay any money for that. In fact, you can see this right here. That little icon in the right corner is notification of a, a share, a Facebook share, and here you can see I'm advertising my book. I've got 11 shares and it's really helping to explode the page. So what happens is more people see the post, more people become fans, things go viral, and you get to push out information again time and time again. So organic, what, what, the, what do these things mean? We have organic, viral, and paid. So organic is the fans of my page. So, you know, 796 people saw this because they liked my page when I advertised. I sent out an update, and then they, they kind of mark it for me. I love it. Now, the viral aspect I just explained. You know, people are liking it. People are sharing it. And we've had 269 uh, viral views of this very post. Pretty cool. I did something new. Uh, Facebook has got paid posts now where you can pay like five bucks and they'll tell you more people will see it. So at this point about a hundred people have seen it for five dollars. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, an, a free promotion at Amazon for my book and I'm doing that because I want to get the book into as many people's hands as possible to get more reviews to rank better on Amazon. So at this point you know things are really going awesome for Revenge of the Affiliate. I'm really, really happy with where this uh, kind of uh, case study is going, where this uh, test is heading. Um, I'm able to really uh, create large communities, and I'm just to the point now where I'm starting to monetize, and I'm ramping things up. And again, at this point, how many have I got? I've got, I've got about two official pages right now. 
I'm really serious about the one you're looking at. It's got, at this point, it's already got about 1,800, 1900 fans, and I've done that in less than two weeks. Uh, and it, basically, I'm going to turn off the spending when I get to about 5,000 fans. And at that point, the, it's just going to grow on its own. It's like there's no way it's going to stop because of this viral aspect of Facebook. And then I'm going to leverage the, the Facebook fan page to drive traffic to my website, to drive traffic to my book, and everything is going to work synergistically. Really exciting. Uh, the second, uh, the third one I've got coming, actually, let's talk about the third one. I just registered a domain yesterday, and I'm actually doing a campaign to come up with a unique logo. That's something that you want to think about. You want to have a really nice branded logo to move forward with. You want to look as professional as you can. You can spend uh, hundreds of dollars on, on this kind of activity. You can do it cheap. So maybe that's something we'll talk about later. Anyway, guys, that's an update for Revenge of the Affiliate. It's going uh, smashingly well. And I'll continue to learn about this and get the information I need to really teach you at a high level. And uh, if, if it uh, works out as well as it does, we'll definitely uh, do some of that teaching and we'll have a coaching program. Pretty exciting. You guys take care. I hope you found this to be uh, a good uh, video. Take care.